Okay, we're gonna put this transmission back together. Instead of going through all the trouble and trying to figure this out again, I'm just gonna show you. This is how it all goes. As you may recall it fell apart when we took it out. Now I'm killing myself here. It goes like this. This fork with the cutout goes on the bottom. Fork without the cutoff goes on the top. There are slots in them. There's a little nub on the back. This is the fifth gear one that goes in this one. And then the reverse one has the same thing. So you have to kind of... Down here is first, second. Up here is third, fourth. You have to kind of hold all this together and slide them in the synchro rings, or the, if that's even what it's called, where the synchros are. And then this piece is what selects your reverse gear. Now that that's all precariously in there, we already put the spring back in the bottom. The shaft slides down through all this. You have to fish it through all these holes. pretty tight fit and then I said there's a spring down the bottom and without this being supported it's got a little bind to it but with, with oil in there it it slides okay one thing I didn't show was this magnet right here in the transmission case. And that is covered with metal shavings, so we should probably clean that thing off. I went to work earlier and pressed in that bearing, which is the whole reason we've done all this. And this carrier plate goes on next. Unfortunately, the bolt holes only line up one way. It's said to install that plate, but don't tighten it down yet. So we'll install that thing loosely. Okay, that's in there loosely. Well, while we have all this apart, I got a gasket set, which has gasket seals, etc. We'll go ahead and do this one while it's apart. Easier said than done, right? It's like a shift shaft seal. Yeah, say that three times fast. The shifter shaft seal is right there. We'll go ahead and try to get that out of there.
It's like part of some bushing I broke a little piece off of right there. So that's like a sliding ball bearing, linear bearing kind of deal. I don't think that little piece gone is going to hurt. It just hits the end and then nothing really happens there. That looks to be the one. in case we forget later. Should be all there is to do in this one. Try to level that out a little bit. All this should be good in here. Now we got a new gasket for here. Let's see which way this goes. Not like that. a little better. The book says next we need to um, align the reverse gear shaft so there's like a cam looking thing on here. You're supposed to put a bolt in it and make the distance the same to both uh, case holes in the transmission. So this apparently is the bolt to kick my butt from everything coming apart because this comes from the outside of the case and holds this aligned. I'm not sure how we're going to measure that distance. Let me figure that out. This is certainly not precise, but I think all they need that for is when we put the case back in and put that bolt in, we can hit the hole. So I'm using the speed square, use this ruler. We're about 1.6 to the center of the hole. Line up the center of the hole there. About 1.45, so we'll come back a little bit. I'm going to call that good. So that's why the reverse thing needs to be lined up, is that part's machined in the case to accept that kind of half round. See if that bolt fits. Looked like it was lined up.
that's 18 foot pounds on the main bolts there's two back here behind the uh, where the shifter goes in that there's no way I'm gonna be able to get a torque wrench on so we'll just guesstimate those This reverse gear shaft lock calls for 22 and it's a Torx. These are the main shaft clamping bolts, main shaft bearing clamping bolts, and that calls for 11 foot pounds, which would be 15 newton meters, according to the book. Go ahead and put this drive flange on next. Okay, so I found part of my steering wheel puller set and a long M10 bolt. I think it's a uh, transmission mounting bolt. Spring washers in there. Some little C-clips in there. Fifth gear should go on next. It says the groove should go up. I'm assuming that's the groove they're talking about. I don't remember exactly. So I'm supposed to heat that up to put it on, but it doesn't look like it needed it. Now there is a washer and a clip. That appears to be the washer. That should be the clip. Fancy snap-on flyers here that'll open that thing up. So next, here in the pile of parts, I believe that should go on. But at the same time, we need to put our locking plate on. So the fifth gear shift fork. This locking plate should drop down on. I believe that's what was in there. I should probably read a little more on this, refresh my memory. I think this will need to come up some. I know I don't want to pull that thing out. So without VW Special Tool, I've slipped this on here. You kind of have to hold this locking plate up. This is left hand thread.
Now there's a distance that's supposed to be. So that's supposed to project out of here five millimeters or two hundred thousandths of an inch. We're working in inches today. So we're about 130 right there. I call that 200,000. So to do this properly, you reach through this hole right here. Maybe, I can, maybe you can see it. Look all the shift, for, shift forks lined up. So I push down the first one right there and that engages reverse. So reverse is down, that's engaged. Let me see if I can, here we go. Should be in neutral now. We pop that down, it puts us in reverse, which should lock the transmission from moving. So now we can put this bolt back in to hold the fifth gear on. So there is the washer. So I put the washer on there. Now for a little thread locking compound. figure out how to hold this thing and torque this to 111 foot-pounds. Let's try and get over here. I can hold back a little bit. So I can't get this thing tight enough on the bench for 111 foot-pounds. So I put it on the floor. Ah, there we go. So now that tight, should be able to flick this back in neutral or take it out of reverse. So next we're going to attempt to put the selector shaft stuff back together. This piece goes in first, I know that much. There's a little like linear bearing in there. I'm gonna shoot a little oil in that. I mean that'll get lubricated by the gear oil once it runs a little bit. So that piece goes in. That sort of helps line this shaft up. What the book somehow doesn't mention is they show one spring. I went back through my video and I apparently didn't record this part. There's two springs in here. One that puts pressure that way and one that puts that puts pressure on the shaft that way. So we need to get this spring in here, get this cover on, and then there's a snap ring that holds it all to that shaft. I'm not sure how that's gonna work. But it would be like this. How many times do you think I'm going to chase that across the garage? Wow, that was way easier than I thought that was going to be. Okay. Make sure it's in the groove as it should be. Appears to be. Appears to be happy. Okay. Now, 
There is a larger spring. Goes in there. And then the selector shaft cover holds that spring in. Let me clean that up. to 37 foot-pounds. Put this in next. That's our spring pressure. I think that has a torque too. We're just going to call tight is good on that one. There's a whole procedure for adjusting that and don't think it really applies to this transmission. I think it all goes goes with how hard it is to move that. Okay, I think we have this adjusted right. It calls to lock this down on the splines by using a half inch tool to support it and then some VW special tool to knock it down. I think that's going to be a screwdriver and a punch in this case. All right, I'll pound on that some more. I believe all this to be correct now. I have cleaned up the fifth gear cover. I also have our new throwout bearing out of our clutch kit. Let's see if I can get this to stay in here. While I put this on, then I won't have to take all this apart to put it in later. So. Wish me luck on that one. So this is the way it goes. Our, there's our spring, etc. This thing should. Drop all together. Oh, gasket looks jacked up. Popped off the dowel over there. The that gasket's pretty large for whatever reason. Just like the one on the base. We find some bolts. Eighteen foot pounds. So the reverse light switch, there's a copper ceiling washer in the kit, the gasket kit. I'm assuming that's what it's for. Tighten that thing too much. That 
That's hardly anything. I guess I need to find one of those. I think we're going to call it quits for tonight. <laughs>